Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, it is time to revisit the Merciful Servant, this time with the video Allah is the Light. Yet again, disclaimer first, I'm not saying this to advocate for anything whatsoever, quite the opposite. This is for harm reduction and educational purposes. If anything, I want you to stay away from mind-altering substances. However, in my own spiritual experiences i did see the light of god this is yet again up to you to believe or not i'm not telling you it is the truth i'm simply sharing my perspective even back in the day many orthodox brothers said that this is the light of satan and that i am lying i'm not here to convince anybody i'm simply reporting on what i saw and i saw this beautiful light of god it was the purest light that i've ever witnessed nothing in this creation can compared to it. It seemed like a light that goes through a prism and through that prism break you have the creation of colors and this world appeared to be this creation of colors, this diverse world, a duality of sorts. But God is one, a singularity. In his light there is no division. This is how I experienced the light of God. Anyways, enough of my ramblings. With no further ado, let's have a look. The verse begins, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the nur, the light of the heavens and earth. What Makes is sense. the meaning of this? Allah is the source of guidance in all of the heavens and earth. So nur is the source of guidance and moreover, he is the source of everything. It is symbolic of hidayah. And this interpretation has plenty of evidence from the Quran and Sunnah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the Quran a nur. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ نُورًا مُبِينًا Allah says in the Quran that Allah Azza wa Jal يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ Allah takes mankind from darkness and He takes him into light. So all guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَهْدِ اللَّهُ لِنُورِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah guides to His nur anyone whom He pleases. The second interpretation of Allah Nur Samawati Wal Ard is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings light to the heavens and earth, a physical light. Allah Azza wa Jal creates light, a physical light. So where does light come from? Allah gave us this light. And the third interpretation is that we take the ayah at face value. And indeed, Allah is light. Allah is nur in a way that Allah knows. Allah says in the Quran, Again, I'm not an Islamic scholar. I'm just sharing my own experience and especially my past experiences. This is how I witnessed God. Light could be a description of his. However, I heard another Islamic description where the light was described as his hijab. The light was the covering of God. That could be true as well. Ultimately, the way that I witnessed God is that I cannot witness him at all because he's nothing like his creation. There is no way to perceive him because he is transcending all the senses. So if I try to put my finger on it and say God is like a light, this is already not God. If I say that God transcends time, sure, somehow this might be true, but then again, I'm using limited words and it won't do God justice. So therefore, there's absolutely no way to describe God aside from this light that is emanating from him. This earth on the day of judgment will be set alight by the nur coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sense. our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would pray in Qiyamul layl and in Salat al-Tahajjud. He would say, Allahumma laka alhamdu anta nurus samawati wal ardi wa man fihim. Oh Allah, to you belongs all praise. You are the nur of the whole heavens and earth. Anta nurus samawati wal ardi wa man fihim. We all know what happened when Musa asked to see Allah. We all know the story, right? That Musa said, Rabbi arini anzur ilayk. And Allah said, Lantarani, you cannot see me. 
but I will show myself to the mountain. If the mountain can withstand me, then you can withstand me. When the mountain saw the mountain crumbled and Musa fell unconscious. Allah is demonstrating, you don't have the power to withstand my beauty. Inna Allah jameel, inna Allah noor. Allah is the ultimate beauty, the ultimate light. So as a mercy to us, he has protected us from his beauty, from his radiance. How? Through Very interesting. Yet again, throughout my experience, when I saw God's light, I dissolved. It is extremely complicated to explain this. However, within that experience, I found myself first as myself. And then I started dissolving until nothing of me was left anymore. I didn't hit my perception as Bobby. Bobby completely died. And only by letting the ego die off and then slowly but surely letting go of my body, I melted. And this is how I could perceive that light. This is why, and I don't want to pull a Jordan Peterson here, but I believe that those stories have a literal and a metaphorical sense because they can describe how we have to dissolve ourselves in order to return to God. A hijab of darkness? No. Even his hijab is light. Hijab or nur. Yeah, exactly. The example of his light. The example of his light. What is the light being referenced here? Perhaps the strongest interpretation is that of Ibn Abbas who said that the light of this ayah, the example of his light, is the light of Iman that Allah places in the heart of the believer. The example of his light, مثل نوره. What is this light referred to? The light that Allah has given in the heart of every believer. The example of this light is like a niche. What is a niche? A niche is a crevice in the wall. Mishkat is a crevice in the wall. Inside this crevice is a candle. The candle is enclosed in a glass lamp. So imagine it, visualize it that there is a crevice, there's a niche that's going in. And inside the niche, there is a lamp. And the lamp or the, the candle, it is enclosed in glass. So you have the crevice, you have the glass, you have the light. This is the example that Allah says. مَثَلُ نُورِهِ كَمِشْكَاتٍ فِيهَا مِصْبَاحِ الْمِصْبَاحُ فِي زجاجة. الزجاجة, This light, this crystal, this lamp. كَأَنَّهَا كَوْكَبٌ دُرِّي This crystal itself is like it is a star that is set alight. Just the crystal, not even the light. The lamp that the light is in is itself a beautiful star, a radiant star. The lamp, this, this misbah, where does the oil come from? The oil comes from a blessed tree. Shajara Mubaraka. Zaytuna, an olive tree. لا شرقية ولا غربية. This tree is neither found in the east or in the west. The oil that comes from this blessed tree, يكاد زيتها يضيء. This oil is so pure and brilliant. The oil itself is about to give out fire even before the match touches it. ولو لم تمسسه نار. Now, what is this symbolism here? How do we interpret all of this? One interpretation is the niche or the crevice represents the chest of the believer. Al-Mishkat. The Mishkat represents the chest of the believer. So this is the chest, literally. And the glass represents the qalb or the heart. And the misbah itself or the light itself, it represents the light of Iman from Allah. So the light of Iman is inside the glass heart, which is protected in the chest of the believer. Mm -hmm. This is the interpretation of Ibn Abbas and others. And to give the analogy of the heart as being glass is so profound because what is glass? It is firstly see-through and the heart of the believer is see-through. Well. He acts and he deals as his heart is. The believer is not a hypocrite. The believer is a straight-faced man. If he's feeling angry or sad, you'll see it. He's not going to be double-faced. If he doesn't like you, he's not going to double-cross you. His heart is like a glass. Also, glass could be fragile and it could be more solid than a rock. Some people's hearts are fragile. Some people's hearts are very soft, soft as some types of glass. And some people's hearts are harder than rocks. So by giving the symbolism of glass, all of this is encompassed. The lamp, as we said, represents the light of Iman, the heart of the believer that Allah has given light. And the tree, what is the tree? 
The blessed tree is the tree of the Quran. Where does the light come from for Iman? It comes from the Quran. The Wahi itself, the revelation is this Shajara Mubaraka. And that is why Allah says it's neither east nor west. It's not of this world. The Quran is from up above. The Quran is not from this world. La Sharqiyatin Wala Gharbiya. So the Quran is giving us the purest of pure oil. That oil is so bright, it doesn't need a, a match to light it up. But when it reaches our hearts and when the light of the oil reaches the purity of the heart, what happens? Noorun ala noor. You have a double light, the light of the Quran and the light of the purity of the heart of the believer. The both of them add to one another. And that is why pure hearts always find Islam. Even if they're non-Muslim, pure fitras eventually are guided to Islam because they have noor. And then they see the noor of the Quran and the two of them are put together. Noorun ala noor. Allah guides people to this light whomever he pleases and Allah gives parables to mankind and indeed Allah is aware of all things all right guys and this is it for today's video very interesting man fascinating subject to me personally but what i would like to know is those interpretations that he mentioned are they legit and moreover are there other interpretations as well because after all i believe those interpretations come way way later than the prophet the quran etc etc and therefore they are people that interpret so how can we trust those sources that those interpretations are correct this would be my question that being said i can totally relate to this video not only due to my spiritual experiences in the amazon jungle etc but it reminded me of an experience that i had on mount athos mount athos is an island next to greece which hasn't changed in over a thousand years it is inhabited by monks and priests alone there are no women allowed on this island simply men worshiping god in their monasteries for over a thousand years it is an absolutely breathtaking place. You have to understand the monastery that I stayed in was old school. There was no electricity whatsoever. So we would always make a little fire at night. It was so cold, man, to keep warm. I was in a shared room with other pilgrims. One pilgrim grew very near to my heart. He was from Germany as well, but he was a Greek, which came in handy because most of the people on Athos speak Greek. So he became my translator translator and every time I would have a question he would translate for me. Anyways, at night he would use his little lamp to go to the toilet. He would always shine through the room to find his way because yet again there was no electricity. So one night I was laying in that bed praying to God and all of a sudden I felt that light again. And I was certain that it was that pilgrim yet again with his lamp shining through just to find his way. This time it was different though because I felt this light right here in my face directly. So I opened my eyes out of prayer and I wanted to say to him hey man why do you shine into my face but when I opened my eyes it was pitch black it was complete darkness and the guy was in his bed so that light came from within so I closed my eyes again and I saw this light coming back and just filling my whole body and I got a message that now hard times are ahead and just when I left the island later on this whole pandemic started. I felt like sharing the story with you guys. And I personally am convinced that this is the light of God. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.